Okay, continuing with our uh, complete car build, we're going to touch on the uh, engine and transmission mounting. You can see we've got this uh, started on, a, on our surface plate. It's a really nice uh, surface plate that we built. We've also got a very intricate uh, block mounting system. Obviously, we're not going to expect you to have that if you're building one of these in a kit, but we do this every day. So we've built a very nice fixture to locate the, uh, to the block and, and get it at the right angle. So engine placement, we get this all the time, uh, especially when we sell a, a, a chassis kit. Where do I put, where do I place the engine and transmission? So there are an infinite number of possibilities based on the class you're going to run, the power you have, uh, the weight of the engine. Is it a steel block, aluminum block? Is it a nitrous engine? Is it a blown engine? Is it turbocharged? So I, there's really not enough time to spend on how you kind of calculate all that. Basically what we do is we have a library of locations that we have used over the years and we base those on testing at the track. So we can kind of um, give you a very close location from the rear axle center line forward to the, um, to the back of the block, which is gonna be a, a very common location. Uh, years ago, it used to be to the center of the number one plug, but now there's so many different variations that uh, the back of the block is kind of the standard. Just to kind of briefly summarize this, this, this is a power glide car, obviously. It's going to have a 632 in it, so we've got a, a 10 200 DAC standard bore center. This is a 48 bore, 484 bore center, big block. And uh, this is our, uh, our standard front motor plate. This is a narrow motor plate, and it fits the big block Chevy pattern. And then we also have uh, this kit is available, which comes with the plates and the foot and the tube which is gonna line up with the, uh, with the mounts on the side here. So once you have your engine located, you put the engine and transmission combination together with the mid plate in it. Uh, as a rule of thumb, we're gonna set the crankshaft center line at around 10 inches from the track surface. So everything for the height is at, at gonna be at the track surface. And these are just general specs because we're gonna, as we slide this engine around front to back, we're gonna change the pitch of it just a little bit so that it lines up with the rear end. But as, as a majority of the locations, the crankshaft center line, which is going to be right through the center of this main cap here, um, it's going to be 10 inches to the track surface. So that's a pretty good standard there. We've obviously got the engine level this way, and there is a slight incline built into this. And another um, standard is kind of around two, anywhere from 1.9 to 2.2 degrees of angle with it being higher in the back. So we've got it angled up so that the drive shaft is running uh, in line with the pinion. So this will have about, let's just say, for an average two degrees of engine angle here. And we're level across here. We got 10 inches here. So that gives us uh, some of the, the coordinates to mount this. Then, like I said before, there's going to be a given number uh, from the rear axle center line to the back of the block right here at the base of the block at the front of the mid plate. Just for sake of this video, we're going to say those range anywhere from 80 inches to 85 inches. So that gives you about a five inch window here to slide that around. And that is, like I said, based on the power, the weight of the engine, the combination of class, what you're gonna run. So there's lots of variables there. So that's the only one that we really can't nail down, but that's gonna measure from the rear axle center line forward to the base of the block here at the back. And then we have, uh, we have a block protector in here. This is a, uh, this is a single frame rail car. So this has got a single frame rail mid plate in it, which is quarter inch, but also has a big hole cut out in the center. So we have an eighth inch block protector in there to keep any uh, uh, flywheel or converter issues from getting to the pan or the back of the block. So block protector mid plate transmission. Um, this is our upper mid plate support tube. It's tied into the top of the mid plate here. And then there are tabs down on the main frame rail on the front and back side of the mid plate. And that's going to that's going to clamp that mid plate there. This is going to bolt it here. Um, our firewall is going to end up coming out and fitting to all this and cover this up and fit to this mid plate. So uh, as we come back, we're going to have uh, we have our uh, our standard uh, power glide transmission mount kit here at the back, which is a laser cut tab and a tube and a receiver that uh, fits to the transmission cross member. And you can see this car has an offset. Um, transmission cross member so that we have enough room to put a deep pan on the uh, on the transmission so this is kicked back where if it were a clutch car 
this cross member here would be up here in line with these um, foot tubes. So this is offset, this is the trans mount, this kit comes unwelded, and this is how we mount the, uh, the back of the transmission. This one is still a little long yet because this is, the, this is the plate as it comes out of the kit. Once we're done here, we're going to trim this down and uh, profile this plate to match the uh, transmission mount a little closer. And so what you got to do is you'll have a, a, a cross bolt here that goes through that sleeve and holds this uh, tube up. So when you're ready to change the transmission, you're going to take these bolts out, pull this bolt, and this is going to slide down flat here and, and go all the way down to the transmission cross member. Now this transmission can come in and out easily. Okay, rolling ahead with our uh, complete car build here. We're going to talk about the uh, drive shaft loop placement. So in the, uh, in the chassis build, we have a permanent drive shaft loop that goes at the uh, rear cross member and the upper four link cross member here at the back. So that stays in the car, that's welded in, it's a permanent part. But we have uh, removable cross member, or removable drive shaft loops up here at the front which can be, um, only one is required, but this is gonna be a top sportsman car, so we need a drive shaft enclosure tube. Um, this car is uh, destined to have a carbon drive shaft, so we're gonna put a six inch uh, tube in it. So it's, a, it's a required to have a 12 inch minimum length tube. This one's gonna be six inches diameter. So to accommodate that, because the automatic, we don't really have a, a good mounting point for the front of the tube, we're gonna put two loops in this car, two removable drive shaft loops. And as you can see, they're fit to the to the floor X here, and this one's going to come out. The, these are these are going to be pinned in. They're already drilled and ready, but this one is going to slip out of here. So these also split apart right here in the middle. Have two quick pins here, two in the bottom. Um, these are going to support that tube. So we're going to have that drive shaft enclosure tube fit through here, and then when we're done, we'll have uh, a couple of mounts off of the uh, bottom and the top of of this tube to support that drive shaft enclosure. So if there is a drive shaft failure at the front, that it's, uh, it's kind of gonna dissipate its energy inside of that tube. So this car is gonna have a carbon tunnel inside when it's done, so this will all be um, covered in carbon. So what we're gonna have here is these two loops supporting the drive shaft enclosure tube, and then uh, on top of that, we'll have a full carbon tunnel in it. So this is kind of a standard outlay for us, whether it's a power glide, uh, Turbo 400, anything that is a uh, automatic transmission car that doesn't have a Blanco or a B&J transmission behind it is going to have this configuration. It's very easy to do. These are 4130 loops. These are these are not plated yet, but this is uh, this is how we're going to start this layout and how we're going to contain that uh, drive shaft tube in the in the chassis.